Hello, my name is Matt Elliott and I'm a staff multi-cloud solution architect at VMware. Today I'm going to demo using VMware HCX to migrate an example application from an on-prem environment into Google Cloud VMware Engine. From there, I'll migrate it into Azure VMware Solution. And finally, I'll migrate that same application into VMware Cloud on AWS. Before we jump into the actual demo, let me describe the example application I'm using. I've nicknamed this the Snazzy app, and it's made up of two VMs running a few different services. Snazzy Jumpbox on the left is running Telegraph, which is an open source monitoring agent. Telegraph is storing data in an InfluxDB instance running on the same VM. Snazzy Grafana is just running the Grafana service, which is an open source dashboard tool. It connects to the InfluxDB instance running on Snazzy Jumpbox to display the collected monitoring metrics on a dashboard. Let's quickly talk about networking. IPv4 addresses are assigned via DHCP, but IPv6 addresses are statically assigned from the unique local address range. This range is very similar to the IPv4 private address range, also known as RFC 1918, except that there are a lot more of them. I'm going to be using HCX bulk migration for this demo, so the VMs will boot up after each migration, meaning that they will be assigned a new IPv4 address via DHCP. Grafana is configured to access InfluxDB over IPv6, so that connectivity will stay in place regardless of the IPv4 address assigned or the hyperscaler that the VMs are running in. This is just one approach to preserving connectivity during migration. Other approaches include using DNS or HCX network extension to preserve IPv4 addresses during migration. Here's what my environment looks like pre-migration. My lab is on the right and it is connected to VMware SDDCs running in Google Cloud VMware Engine, Azure VMware Solution, and VMware Cloud on AWS. First, I'll migrate my snazzy app to Google Cloud VMware Engine, and I'll verify that it still works as expected after the migration. Then, I'll migrate the same app to Azure VMware Solution, and again, verify it's working. Finally, I'll migrate the app to VMware Cloud on AWS, and again, make sure that it is working as expected. With that, let's get to it. Here we can see my on-prem environment and the two VMs that make up the snazzy app. Both have IPv4 addresses assigned over DHCP. Quickly log into Snazzy Jumpbox so you can see the services that are running. Both the Telegraph service and the InfluxDB service are running on this particular VM. Now let's jump over to Grafana and we'll log in there. And we can see that it is able to uh, display dashboards and access our InfluxDB instance that is running on Snazzy Jumpbox. As you can see, the InfluxDB connection is configured with IPv6 instead of IPv4. Now that we have seen how our app is configured and that it's working on-prem, let's start the migration process to migrate this application over to Google Cloud VMware Engine. Checking our site pairings, we can see that there is an existing site pairing with Google Cloud VMware Engine here. Similarly, when we look at our service meshes, we can also see a service mesh built to Google Cloud VMware Engine, and all the services are showing as green. And just very briefly, here is our Google Cloud VMware Engine environment. So now we'll pop into HCX again and start the process of getting these VMs migrated from on-prem into Google Cloud VMware Engine. You can see here uh, from our dropdown that we can choose the service mesh that we want to use. So we'll use our 
GCVE service mesh. Now we'll search through our inventory, choose the apps we want to migrate, and give this group of VMs a name. Now we'll choose the migration parameters we need, like the uh, resource pool or cluster to migrate the VMs to, which folder they should be placed in in the destination environment, the storage that the VMs will be migrated to, the migration type, in this case bulk migration, And then we need to drill into each application, since this is a bulk migration, and choose the destination network that the VMs should be connected to in the cloud environment. Click validate just to make sure that I've set everything correctly in this dialog. And then once validated, click go to actually start the bulk migration. I've used a little bit of editing magic to speed up the migration process so that we won't have to sit and watch the whole thing, but uh, in real time this takes about 30 minutes. So now we can see our migration has been completed. If we browse back over to our on-prem environment, we can see that the VMs have been moved to a new folder and renamed with a timestamp appended to them, and they're off. Browsing over to our Google Cloud VMware Engine environment, we can see now that the VMs are on, and they have been assigned a new IPv4 address. So now we'll take that pop it over into the browser, and we should be able to hit Grafana, which is now running in Google Cloud VMware Engine. Just as we'd hoped, we're able to access our dashboard. It looks like all of our data is there. So that means that Telegraph can talk to InfluxDB. But just to verify, we'll go into the uh, data source and test it, and it does verify that it is working as expected. So we'll waste no time here. We'll go ahead and migrate this VM to Azure VMware Solution following the same basic process. We can see we have a site pairing here that is connected to AVS. And similarly, we have a service mesh between Google Cloud VMware Engine and Azure VMware Solution that's working and all services are green. We'll do the same migration process by jumping into the migration dialog and choosing all of the various parameters that are needed to migrate these VMs. Now we're ready to start our migration, but I need to provide a unique name for the group. And after fixing that, I'm able to start the migration process again. Just like our previous migration, now we'll check our environment. We can see that in Google Cloud VMware Engine, the VMs have been moved to a folder, powered off, renamed, just as expected. 
Bouncing over to Azure VMware Solution, we can see now in our workloads folder the same snazzy VMs that we've been migrating around. So again, new IP address, let's grab that and then we'll pop that into the browser and make sure Grafana is still working as expected. As we can see here again, our dashboard looks good, and the data source configured within InfluxDB is working as expected. Now the rest of this demo is going to look very familiar because you've already seen it twice, but to be complete, we're going to now move these VMs from Azure VMware Solution into VMware Cloud on AWS. And the fact that this is really so simple that it gets almost repetitive at this point really underscores the value of HCX and running compatible environments in the three different hyperscalers. This would have been a huge headache to do with native instances, but here we're able to bounce the same two VMs between three different hyperscalers with relative ease. So again, just choosing the options necessary in HCX to migrate this VM one last time. We'll again choose them and add them to a group, this time with a unique name. I had a little misfire selecting that last network there, so validation fails. But as soon as I fix that, I'm able to fire off the migration process, just like we have two times before. And there we have it. Our snazzy app has been migrated now from on-prem to three different hyperscalers. We can see in our Azure VMware solution environment, the VMs are renamed and moved to a new folder. And in VMC on AWS, in our workloads folder, we can see our snazzy app is running there. And the last thing that we need to do is just one last verification step to ensure this is working as expected, but I've got pretty high confidence since we've already done this twice. So we can see again a working dashboard, working data source, everything working as expected. So that pretty much brings us to the end of this demo. Um, I appreciate you taking some time to watch this. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Of course, there's multiple ways to do what I just showed you. I chose to use bulk migration with IPs that are basically ephemeral. But as I stated earlier, network extension with HCX, you can vMotion workloads instead of bulk migration. Uh, you can do automation and migrate um, DNS entries uh, to new IPs if you want. So there's a lot of different options for this. Um, so you just have to choose the method that fits you best. Thanks.